three quarters. Anyone claiming that America's economy is in decline is peddling fiction. Now, what is true, and the reason that a lot of Americans feel anxious, is that the economy has been changing in profound ways. Changes that started long before the Great Recession hit, changes that have not let up. Today, technology doesn't just replace jobs on the assembly line, but any job where work can be automated. Companies in a global economy can locate anywhere, and they face tougher competition. As a result, workers have less leverage for a raise. Companies have less loyalty to their communities. And more and more wealth and income is concentrated at the very top. All these trends have squeezed workers, even when they have jobs, even when the economy is growing. It's made it harder for a hard-working family to pull itself out of poverty, harder for young people to start their careers, tougher for workers to retire when they want to. And although none of these trends are unique to America, they do offend our uniquely American belief that everybody who works hard should get a fair shot. For the past seven years, our goal has been a growing economy that also works better for everybody. We made progress, but we need to make more. And despite all the political arguments that we've had these past few years, there are actually some areas where Americans broadly agree. We agree that real opportunity requires every American to get the education and training they need to land a good paying job. The bipartisan reform of No Child Left Behind was an important start. And together we've increased early childhood education, lifted high school graduation rates to new highs, boosted graduates in fields like engineering, in the coming years, we should build on that progress by providing pre-K for all and offering every student <laughs> offering every student the hands-on computer science and math classes that make them job ready on day one. We should recruit and support more great teachers for our kids. And, and we have to make college affordable for every American. No hardworking student should be stuck in the red. We've already reduced student loan payments by, uh, to 10% of a borrower's income. And that's good. But now we've actually got to cut the cost of college. <laughs> Providing two years of community college at no cost for every responsible student is one of the best ways to do that. And I'm going to keep fighting to get that started this year. It's the right thing to do. But a great education isn't all we need in this new economy. We also need benefits and protections that provide a basic measure of security. It's not too much of a stretch to say that some of the only people in America who are going to work the same job in the same place with a health and retirement package for 30 years are sitting in this chamber. <laughs> Especially folks in their 40s and 50s, saving for retirement or bouncing back from job loss has gotten a lot tougher. 
Americans understand that at some point in their careers, in this new economy, they may have to retool, they may have to retrain, but they shouldn't lose what they've already worked so hard to build in the process. That's why Social Security and Medicare are more important than ever. We shouldn't weaken them, we should strengthen them. And for Americans short of retirement, basic benefits should be just as mobile as everything else is today. That, by the way, is what the Affordable Care Act is all about. It's about filling the gaps in employer-based care so that when you lose a job, or you go back to school, or you strike out and launch that new business, you'll still have coverage. Nearly 18 million people have gained coverage so far. And in the process, in the process, Healthcare inflation has slowed, and our businesses have created jobs every single month since it became law. Now, uh, I'm guessing we won't agree on healthcare anytime soon. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, applause right there. Just a guess. But there should be other ways parties can work together to improve economic security. Say a hard-working American loses his job. We shouldn't just make sure that he can get unemployment insurance. We should make sure that program encourages him to retrain for a business that's ready to hire him. If that new job doesn't pay as much, there should be a system of wage insurance in place so that he can still pay his bills. And even if he's going from job to job, he should still be able to save for retirement and take his savings with him. That's the way we make the new economy work better for everybody. I also know Speaker Ryan has talked about his interest in tackling poverty. America is about giving everybody willing to work a chance, a hand up. And I'd welcome a serious discussion about strategies we can all support like expanding tax cuts for low-income workers who don't have children. But there are some areas where we just have to be honest. It has been difficult to find agreement over the last seven years. And a lot of them fall under the category of what role the government should play in making sure the system's not rigged in favor of the wealthiest and biggest corporations. And it's an honest disagreement. And the American people have a choice to make. I believe a thriving private sector is the lifeblood of our economy. I think there are outdated regulations that need to be changed. There is red tape that needs to be cut. There you go. Yeah. Sure. But after years now of record corporate profits, Working families won't get more opportunity or bigger paychecks just by letting big banks or big oil or hedge funds make their own rules at everybody else's expense. A middle, mid middle class families are not going to feel more secure because we allowed a tax on collect, uh, collective bargaining to go unanswered. Food stamp recipients did not cause the financial crisis. Recklessness on Wall Street did. Immigrants aren't the principal reason wages haven't gone up. Those decisions are made in the boardrooms that all too often put quarterly earnings 
over long-term returns. It sure not the average family watching tonight that avoids paying taxes through offshore accounts. The point is, I believe, that in this new economy, workers and startups and small businesses need more of a voice, not less. The rules should work for them. And I'm not alone in this. This year I plan to lift up the many businesses who figured out that doing right by their workers or their customers or their communities ends up being good for their shareholders. And I want to spread those best practices across America. That's part of a brighter future. In fact, it turns out many of our best corporate citizens are also our most creative. And this brings me to the second big question we as a country have to answer. How do we reignite that spirit of innovation to meet our biggest challenges? Sixty years ago, when the Russians beat us into space, we didn't deny Sputnik was up there. <laughs> we didn't argue about the science or shrink our research and development budget. We built a space program almost overnight, and 12 years later, we were walking on the moon. That spirit of discovery is in our DNA. America is Thomas Edison and the Wright brothers and George Washington Carver. America's Grace Hopper and Katherine Johnson and Sally Ride. America is every immigrant and entrepreneur from Boston to Austin to Silicon Valley racing to shape a better future. That's who we are. And over the past seven years, we've nurtured that spirit. We've protected an open internet and taken bold new steps to get more students and low-income Americans online. We've launched next-generation manufacturing hubs and online tools that give an entrepreneur everything he or she needs to start a business in a single day. But we can do so much more. Now, last year, Vice President Biden said that with a new moonshot, America can cure cancer. Last month, he worked with this Congress to give scientists at the National Institutes of Health the strongest resources that they've had in over a decade. Well, So tonight I'm announcing a new national effort to get it done. And because he's gone to the mat for all of us on so many issues over the past 40 years, I'm putting Joe in charge of mission control. For the loved ones we've all lost, for the families that we can still save, let's make America the country that cures cancer once and for all. What do you say, Joe? Let's make it happen. Now, medical research is critical. We need the same level of commitment when it comes to developing clean energy sources. Look, if anybody still wants to dispute the science around climate change, have at it. You will be pretty lonely because you'll be debating our military, most of America's business leaders, the majority of the American people, almost the entire scientific community, and 200 nations around the world who agree it's a problem and intend to solve it. But, but even if, even if the planet wasn't at stake, even if 2000